Is MBS still going after dissidents? A little-known legal case is exposing the delicate balance the US has been playing for years, maintaining judicial independence and national security, all while trying to keep good relations with Saudi Arabia. Recently, the US Justice Department filed a motion to intervene in a court case against former Saudi intelligence official Saad al-Jabri. The US justified the rare move by saying if sensitive information is revealed at the trial, it could damage America's national security. The case was brought against Jabri in US courts by a group of companies that are part of the kingdom's sovereign wealth fund whose chairman is, yep, you guessed it, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. They're accusing Jabri of corruption and embezzling billions of dollars in state funds. He was the spy chief on the former Crown Prince Mohammed bin Naif, who in 2017 was ousted and placed under house arrest. This one's the 57-year-old Crown Prince. And this one, the one doing all the hand kissing, is his younger cousin. Listen to what the older cousin is saying. He's being forced to give up his power and to pass the crown prince title to his younger cousin, a guy who's almost half his age. Jabri was loyal to Naif and has feared for his life ever since he fled the kingdom for Canada in 2018. Jabri had a close relationship with the CIA. US intelligence and counterterrorism officials have said that he saved the lives of hundreds of Americans. He acted as a bridge between Saudi and Western intelligence agencies. And this court case comes just months after Jabri himself filed a lawsuit against MBS, accusing the Crown Prince of sending an assassination team to kill him. Jabri also alleges that his family is being held hostage in Saudi Arabia. What I'm you know, here to talk about is basically the unlawful transnational and global terror campaign that my family has been suffering for more than three years right now. It's a campaign that is seeking uh, the murder of my father and is actively taking my siblings Sarah and Omar as hostages. We've all become familiar with Saudi tactics and their hit teams following the murder of Jamal Khashoggi at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. There were 15 of them. Most arrived in the dead of night, laid their trap and waited for the target to arrive. Our timeline shows the ruthless efficiency of a hit team of experts that seemed specially chosen from Saudi government ministries. Turkish and Western intelligence officials believe MBS directly ordered the murder. But the Crown Prince denies he was involved, calling what happened a rogue operation. Jabri isn't the only one fearing for his life. There's many other dissidents MBS is going after. Omar Abdulaziz, a prominent activist who was a friend of the slain Washington Post columnist, says Canadian authorities told him he was also being targeted by Riyadh. I received a call from the Canadian Federal Police who said, we have intelligence information that there is a serious intention of targeting you. Is it a killing attempt or kidnapping attempt? We don't know. And there's also Palestinian activist Iyad Baghdadi, who currently lives in Norway. He says that the CIA had warned him through Norwegian intelligence officials of a threat from Saudi Arabia. We want to take you now live to uh, Oslo in Norway, where a Palestinian activist who was warned by the Norwegian government of a possible threat against him from Saudi Arabia. The threats against me and my colleagues are not a new escalation. It is not surprising in the, in the least that MBS would be going after dissidents. Both Baghdadi and Abdulaziz knew Khashoggi, and the latter was working with him to establish a network of dissidents in the kingdom. Most of their activism was done online to counter Saudi propaganda efforts. There have also been reports of many Saudi dissidents and their close circles being hit with cyber attacks. MBS is also reportedly cracking down 
on opponents inside the kingdom. Mohammed bin Salman may be most known for leading the kingdom's Game of Thrones-style royal purge. Back in November 2017, he locked up hundreds of wealthy Saudis in a luxury detention center in what he described as an anti-corruption campaign. Others saw it as a way for MBS to eliminate his potential rivals in a quest for power. Earlier this year, the Biden administration faced criticism for welcoming Saudi Arabia's Prince Khalid bin Salman, MBS's brother, for high-level meetings. During his 2020 presidential campaign, Joe Biden had denounced Khashoggi's murder and pledged Saudi Arabia would be treated as a pariah. But now it seems Biden has changed his tone. He is probably why. It's very likely that he will be the king of Saudi Arabia sometime soon. And this is a very important geostrategic ally for the United States. Many believe MBS is getting a free pass. Khashoggi's murder and the fear that other dissidents live with has left many Saudi activists wondering whether they could be next. <laughs>